Kenya began three days of mourning today for the 148 victims of the Al-Shabaab attack on Thursday. While Easter services across the country have been dedicated to mourning the Garissa University College massacre, in the streets both Muslims and Christians have rallied to condemn the killings. The attack in the northeastern town of Garissa, close to the Somali border, was the country's worst massacre in over a decade. The group responsible, Al-Shabaab, says the massacre was payback for Kenya's involvement in peacemaking operations in Somalia and has threatened more attacks. The residents of Gaza have been expressing fear that the Islamic State group will expand their actions into the Palestinian territories, especially after the execution of the Jordanian pilot Muaz al Kasasba and Mohammed Musallam, the Palestinian citizen of Israel, who was accused of being a spy for Israel. Today in the Gaza Strip, an event was organized by Syrian Human Rights Network and the Eero Med Observer for Human Rights in order to show solidarity with the thousands of Palestinian refugees trapped in Al Yarmouk camp who have been subjected to the attacks of the Islamic State over past days in Syria. The camp in Damascus is now almost completely under the control of the Islamic State group and Al Qaeda's local branch, Al Nusra Front. We have been following the human rights violations by ISIS in the Yarmouk camp against the Palestinian refugees there, and today we are here to stand against all attacks on Palestinian civilians. People in that camp have been suffering for months with a lack of food and water, and now it's even worse. This should stop as soon as possible. On the other hand, different Palestinian political parties, including Hamas and the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, are organizing rallies and protests in solidarity with Al Yarmouk camp to be held in Gaza Strip on Monday. Nurha Razin, Telesu TV, Gaza. And in the past few hours in Yemen, the Houthi movement has reportedly gained ground in the port city of Aden. The Houthi are battling street by street to take the city from forces loyal to the Saudi Arabian-backed president, Abid Rabu Mansour Hadi. The Houthi already control much of Yemen's north, along with the capital of Sana, leaving Aden as the largest remaining Hadi stronghold in the country. In the U.S., construction unions officially joined fast food workers for a fight for a living wage, marching on the McDonald's on New York's 6th Avenue and briefly shutting it down from inside the branch on Saturday. Workers converged on the fast food restaurant, calling for jobs that strengthen the economy for everyone. Together with fast food employees, airport staff, home health care aides, and adjunct professors, they demanded $15 an hour wages and union rights. The action was part of a series of events leading up to the National Day of Action on April 15, when over 100,000 working people are expected to come together in 200 cities across the United States to demand higher wages and the right to unionize. Also in the U.S., hundreds of protesters took to the streets of Indianapolis on Saturday, attracting national attention by gathering outside Lucas Oil Stadium, where the NCAA Final Four basketball tournament took place. The protest was organized in rejection of the new religious objections law, which could discriminate against the sexual diversity community. Indiana Governor Mike Pence approved a series of changes to the new law on April 2nd, following widespread criticism from corporate giants including Apple, nationwide protests and even boycotts. However, protesters called for protections for LGBTI people to be added to the state's civil rights laws. Cuban revolutionary leader Fidel Castro greeted a delegation of Venezuelans on a solidarity mission to Cuba, local media reported on Friday and Saturday. In a public speech, Fidel Castro highlighted the importance of the international campaign, calling on U.S. President Barack Obama to repeal his executive order that arbitrarily declares Venezuela an extraordinary threat to its national security. The Catholic Church around the world celebrates Piernes Santo, or Holy Friday, marking the day Jesus Christ was killed more than 2,000 years ago. In Central America, this day is commemorated with religious processions and colorful carpets made of sand and sawdust that combine the traditions of the Spanish colonizers and the culture of the indigenous people. Every year we have a new message, new rosettes. 
As you can see, this year we have a carpet of just rosettes and key figures with a message of following in the footsteps of Jesus. Each section has a message, a main figure, and they are 600 metres long on Cervantes Avenue. The carpets began as in a Spanish tradition from Tenerife in the 6th century as a representation of the Bible's passage of Jesus Christ's entrance to Jerusalem, where he was received as a king. When the Spanish invaded Latin America, this tradition mixed with that of the indigenous tradition of painting sand and dirt, creating this very popular tradition, particularly in Guatemala and Honduras, making it a main tourist attraction. It's been a tradition, thank God. In my family, we've always tried to keep it alive. Now it's my turn, with my descendants, my wife and my daughter. So here we are, four or five years now, coming to the processions. Principal city streets are closed all day long during the Holy Week to serve as the scenario of these religious and cultural expressions. This is already part of the culture of the majority of Hondurans. You can see the carpets, and now we are waiting for the procession with Monsignor, who is leading the Via Crucis. The Holy Week in Central America is a major vacation, and in many cases it extends throughout a whole week. Many people take the opportunity to visit beaches or simply skip out of town for some rest and relaxation. Many others stay in their home cities to save money or to participate in the traditional activities. But it is precisely in the cities where the religious celebrations have become a very attractive thing to do. Gerardo Torres, Telesur, Central America. Facts that have marked the course of history. Productions designed in the English language and made for the English-speaking world. This is Documentary. Watch it on telesur.net slash English. Tell us, sir, wherever the news, you'll be there.